For the past 10 years, I've basically read every book about writing, but none of them was written for me as a bilingual writer. My first language is Arabic, but I write in English, which is my second language, and I want to share with you the five tips that have helped me as a bilingual writer to become better at English writing. And if you are a beginning writer, this will be helpful for you too. Hi friends, my name is Mohammed and I'm a writer and in this channel we demystify the writing process and discuss tools and habits that make writing joyful. Tip number one is building a consistent reading habit. Children before they speak, they listen and they imitate a lot of what the adults say and for the first few words that they say is not even a language that we know. And as we get older and before we start writing, we actually read or someone reads to us. So it's not necessarily about reading reading a lot of craft books or how to write books is more of reading a lot of various books that are in the, our favorite genre or other genres so that we can get familiar with the cadence of the writing, with the type of styles and what makes good writing happen. And if you speak more than one language, then you have an advantage. After moving to the United States when I was 14, I decided to only speak and learn English because I was just tired of high school students bullying me and I wanted to bring an end to that period. So I neglected Arabic and at some point I started losing the language. I was having a hard time speaking at length. I wasn't reading that well and I was worried. So a few years ago, I decided to go back and read more just news and novels and poetry. And for the first few weeks, I struggled. But after a few weeks, my muscle memory picked up and I realized that I knew much more than what I had thought. And the effect of reading a lot of Arabic again is it spilled into my English. So I started writing more proverbs and saying in Arabic that I grew up learning. And weirdly enough, a lot of memories from my childhood came back and I included them in my writing as well. Tip number two, and this is a bit of a hot take, is practice writing daily. Now I know most of us can't spare one hour a day of our writing session that we can dedicate just for the thing that we are working on. Some of us are students in college or work full time and if you are parent, God bless you. But I wanna encourage you to make an appointment with yourself preferably the same time every day so that you can sit and just write and you don't necessarily have to work on a project or a novel or a story during that appointed time you can actually journal answer a writing prompt or just write down how you feel or what you are going through that specific day and if you absolutely have nothing to write about the alternative is not social media the alternative is for you to read only. Something that I have been dabbling with lately is that translating Arabic poems to English. And that has done something very weird in my brain is that it built a bridge between both languages and I know that you can't get translating 100% right. But it's been fun to see how you can create this mirroring effect of emotions based on text. Tip number three is embracing your writing identity. I wanted to be a writer for a very long time, but for years I hid that part of me. I wrote stories, articles, and some of them got published and journaled and read various books, but none of my friends or even my family knew it. Most of my friends are either engineers, doctors, or lawyers, and I felt intimidated by their clarity of career, their high earnings, and that caused me to hide. And it wasn't until I enrolled in a creative writing program in New York City that I told people about my passion for writing, and most of them were surprised. But the sooner you accept that part of yourself, the less energy, mental energy, that you will use to justify yourself or to hide from other people and just embrace it and get better at it because there are no gatekeepers to the doors of literature you're the only one who's preventing yourself from entering tip number four is finding your community finding people who are bookworms like you and who are passionate about writing will change your life i promise it changed mine these are the friends that you can get nerdy with and they will not judge you but they're also the people who will read your work and make you better you will also read the work and notice their strengths and copy them and you will all become better together but where to find them? Mine, I found them in my writing program and until now we still meet and exchange stories and try to make the stories stronger and better. But you don't have to enroll in a two year writing program in order for you to find those friends. They can be found in Facebook groups, libraries, or even the comment section of your favorite writers. And if you looked in all these places and you found no one, then I would encourage you to enroll in a writing course. A lot of the time these writing courses are made of like 20 to 30 people and there is a workshop attached to it where you can exchange your work and it is read in the group. And from there, some of the writing that you will read will speak to you and you can connect with those people on a one-on-one and you can build that relationship there. So keep your eyes open and try to find them. Do not wait for people to find you. Tip number five, and this is a wild one, is having a physical copy of a dictionary and a thesaurus. Thesaurus? 
thesaurus. Yeah, nice. I can pronounce things. This is an advice I received from one of my writing teacher is to have a dictionary while reading and look up words that I find interesting or vital for that specific story that makes the sentence stand out. You know, some words that you can get the meaning of out of the context of the sentence, other words are not even that important in that particular part of the story. But some words when you read them and you don't know them, you feel like if you know that word, it will make the whole thing different. And if you don't know it, then you feel like you're missing out. And for those, having a physical dictionary is very helpful for you to build your vocabulary. And why a physical copy and instead of looking up the word online is obviously because you will expose yourself, your brain, to more words while you're looking on or for a very particular word. Now, you're not going to take a dictionary with you on your commute to work or while you're doing laundry, but, you know, once or twice a week while you're sitting down on your couch and you're reading, then have it next to you. Now, while writing, and this is very common for people who write in their second language or for beginning writers, is that you write something and you know this particular word in that sentence can be said in a different way that makes it better. Now you will have the thesaurus next to you and you can look up that word. And it's the same process. Because you are looking up one word, but you're going through multiple words to find it, you will become more familiar with more words. And then, you know, in the thesaurus, it will give you for one word, multiple words to say. So you are building that bank of variety that gives you different taste, color, feel for sentences that or stories that you will write in the future. But for this, you have to save this into second or third draft, not the first draft. First draft, just write it because you're just exploring or discovering the story itself. You don't know what is it about yet. So you don't want to create a lot of pauses. You want to just write it all out and then once you are editing, you can just explore better words for what you are trying to say. These are the five tips. I hope you found them helpful and if you are a sentence nerd and you want to know what is a sentence, what makes a really good sentence and the structure of sentences and the different styles, then you watch this video here. In the meantime, thank you for watching and keep writing.